All right, so we got a 2012 Honda Pilot today. Uh, came in with a check engine light and uh, okay, had a converter issue. So we'll go ahead and scan the codes and I'll show you how to change the uh, chaotic converter. There's three different ones on this car, a bank one, a bank two converter, and then the main converter underneath the car. We're gonna go for the uh, bank two converter. So anyway, uh, we'll go through that. It's a little bit involved as far as the front end goes on taking it off, taking it apart, but uh, we'll go through it step by step. All right, so I went ahead and already ran the codes. You got the PO430, uh, which is Kalic efficiency below threshold bank two. Um, Sometimes, a lot of times, people think, oh, it's an O2 sensor. Uh, it's not usually the case, but one way to check that is if you have a good scan tool, bring up the live data and look at your O2 sensor and compare uh, bank one and bank two and kind of see if they're uh, similar. And uh, these two were almost exactly, they were almost doing exactly the same. So that just common sense tells you that if bank two was bad or was off, the numbers would be skewed on it and uh, it would be quite a bit different than bank one, but they were both uh, fairly similar. That's the only uh, codes st uh, stored in the car. So anyway, we will change the bank two catalytic converter, which on these V6s is the, is the uh, one in the front. So uh, anyway, we'll get to removing some of the stuff and get down to it. All right, the first thing you're gonna do is remove all these clips off the front here. Uh, because we have to move this radiator back to get the catalytic converter out from the from the engine, so I'm going to take this top radiator cover off first. Something like, go ahead. Just take something like this, or a screwdriver, or a panel clip remover. Get down in there, just pop them right out. Yeah, I just lost that one. Today's a good day to work on a car. It's like 105 degrees in St. Louis today with the heat index. Alright, so you get all those out and then you'll just take this off and put it off to the side somewhere. All right, so we're going to get this grill out of here. you got two 10 millimeter bolts, one up here, one right here. And then you have uh, five of these upside down uh, going to the bumper. And what I use is a mirror. And then a screwdriver to kind of pop it, and then one of these you get the rest of the way. And then once you get that out, you should be able to pull this away. The reason you have to do that is because you need to... Loosen up your uh, radiator, condenser, your fans, and all that, and pull it forward to get that kale converter out to clear. So that's why we're doing this. Uh, I'm going to get the engine cover off, and then we'll hit these 10 millimeters here and kind of move everything back. Go ahead. All right, so we're going to move these 10 millimeters on here so we can move this assembly back a little bit. You will have to remove your cooling fans, and you have uh, 10 millimeters up here going that way. So we're going to have to remove those. Uh, I think there's one 10 millimeter bolt for this thing here. It goes off. So let me get to that, and I'll pick back up with you. Go ahead. All right, so I took this brace out. You got the uh, 10 mil up here. You got the stud in the bottom. This, this one's real hard to get to. Uh, 
I couldn't get my electric ratchet in there, so I had to do it by hand. Then you have the two here for the cooler. Those are two 10 mil. Those have to come out. So just set this off to the side. And then you got your four for the fan. You got to pull the fans out. Uh, I, took the I took the radiator hose off already. Drain the radiator. Remove the upper radiator hose. Take out your four bolts, 10 millimeter bolts for the fans. And you got a ton of these clips that go in here for the wiring harness and all these holes. Go around with the screwdriver, pop those out, or whatever you have to use. Pop those out, unplug the wiring harness, and then pull these fans out. And that'll give us, uh, we can actually see the converter from here now. And that should be all it's due to the fans. Uh, once you get the fans out, the radiator should come back far enough in the upper hose. Should come back far enough to recover that converter. Uh, you may want to move your you may want to remove your two uh, coils, but we'll go over that in a minute. So next we'll uh, get the second fan out. And then uh, we got an EGR air tube we have to take loose, or the air tube for the cabinet converter. And then we'll start on the cabinet converter itself. All right, so once you get the fans out, I'm going to go ahead and pull this O2 sensor out, uh, just so it's easier to, you know, if it's still on the car, the manifold holds it so you can get the leverage on to loosen it. So I'm going to go ahead and crack that loose, get that out. And then we'll hit these uh, two air tube bolts that are right here. I'll kind of show you those when I get to them. All right, so you got these two uh, 12 millimeter bolts right here on this air tube. I'm not sure how well the camera's picking it up. It's hard to get to with this uh, brace in the way. You got to remove those to, before you remove the cattle converter. All right, so you got the three under here. I've already soaked those down and uh, broke them loose. So you just... Go ahead and run those three off, and then you should be done underneath here. Got one over here and one over here, obviously. So just run these three off, and then we can go to the top, and then we should be able to pull this thing out of here. All right, so you can see on the top here, I removed the, the two coils. I just, uh, the Honda wants you to take them out uh, just to keep, make sure it's a pretty tight fit to pull this converter up. And then uh, you can see the converter right here. There's four bolts you have to take out. So once you remove these four bolts, this thing should pull up out of here. They uh, Be smart to put maybe some cardboard in your radiator so you don't uh, scratch it up or damage it when you're pulling it out. So uh, once you get your coil overs, your coil on, your uh, coil packs removed, go ahead. You just, you know, it's pretty simple. You got, just press on this clip here, pulls it out, and then you got two 10 millimeter nuts, one for each one. And then those will pull right out. So now we're gonna knock these off here. So anyway, we'll pull these four out here, and then this thing should pull up. So I'm going to go ahead and knock those loose and get those out. So it's loose. Uh, should be able to fish it out now. I'm going to put some cardboard by the radiator to protect it, and then I'll fish that thing out. All right, I missed two things. You're going to want to take your uh, hood latch loose and set it off to the side, just so you have enough room to get through here. You can see I got it out right now. Uh, the other thing I missed was on the bottom, where, the, where it bolts the exhaust, you do have another bracket right here 14 millimeter bolt off to the side comes out real easy and then once you get that out uh, it slides right out you will just uh, pull the radiator back a little bit you can see all the movement you had with the upper radiator hose off and it'll slide right through this hole here between the brace and the cardboard here so uh, yep that's uh, we'll go through the reinstallation that's pretty much reverse 
But uh, we'll go through it anyway, so I'm going to go get the part and pick it back up. Alright, so here's the deal with this. This is the uh, factory one here without the heat shield on. Heat shield's over here. This is the one I got yesterday for this car. It's a uh, MagnaFlow. And it's supposed to fit this Pilot, 2012 Pilot. And this thing's got all kinds of issues. It has uh, the extra bung hole here for the O2 sensor, which the factory one does not have. This 2012 Pilot doesn't have the O2 sensor right here. It has it down, farther down. And the problem with that is, uh, this is how stupid MagnaFlow is. They put the brackets here for the uh, factory heat shield to change it over. But once you put a plug in here for the bung, uh, then you have to bend the crap out of this to make it right. The other thing they did is they gave, you notice here there's no studs in the holes. This one has studs. It's a factory. But they gave me the hardware for... Uh, to replace the studs but they it wasn't long enough and then if you put the one that's long enough in there the right bolt then the, you can't get it past the heat shield so uh you got that and then you can see here they got this kind of welded off bracket uh for the bottom bracket on the block whereas the factory it's just it's part of it's actually part of the cat which that's you know it looked like it lined up and then the main problem here on this one um the air the air tube was probably six inches from lining up back to the engine and you can see here it's kind of got its own it's uh, welded on its own little pedestal and it's not really part of the actual pipe and it didn't have studs with it it didn't have the bolts with it so uh, you look at the factory one this is all one piece welded into the pipe and I think just if you look here it goes all the way down to the end of the pipe here if you look at this one it's actually elevated up past the pipe here so there's no way that air tube is going to line up I tried a couple different ways to uh, line the air tube up there was no way put the air tube back on this slid this back in there lined up perfect so uh, you know this thing's just a nightmare dealing with all the crap with it uh, as far as the bu extra bung hole brackets not really right and then the air tube doesn't line up you know this is uh, I want to say at cost it's like 550 for this thing and I mean I got it for I think 480 because I got a, a commercial account with them but uh, yeah this is I would not get a MagnaFlow cable converter for any pilot or any Honda personally I, I don't I mean I've used MagnaFlow aftermarket sauce before had good luck but this is just junk complete junk now this is uh, and I I tried talking her into getting a Honda one uh, originally. She wasn't, you know, it's obviously a lot more money for the Honda converter. I mean, they said uh, just a normal customer without an account, it's like 1100 bucks. We did get it for, if we set up an account, it was going to be like 700 and something with the core. So it is two to three hundred dollars more, but uh, I wasted three hours yesterday running around looking for bolts, uh, getting different bolts for this, getting the bung. You know, of course, nobody had the uh, bung plug in stock anywhere around here. You're in St. Louis. These auto parts stores, I can go on a rant for hours on that, but I'm not going to get off on that. So, anyway, this is Napa's version of the aftermarket converter. And if you can look, it's it's just like the factory here. It's got the uh, studs already in it. It's down, down low like this one is. It's got the bracket here. And it's got the studs on the bottom here, so you're not fighting that. Now it does have its own heat shield, so you're not using, because you can see here on the factory one, you got a whole, this bracket here is where the heat shield bolts to, and this magnifold actually had that. Of course, you can't put it back on with the bung plug in there without bending the crap out of it. But this one here has its own heat shield, which is kind of nice. It'll actually uh, fit down in there easier, and uh, you don't have to deal with putting this back on there, uh, which is, you know, like I said, this is the factory one. 2012 so it's actually in pretty decent shape but uh, you know these things can rattle if they come loose or whatever so I'm kind of glad we're not reusing that now this one does have the bung hole on the bottom like uh, the MagnaFlow does but since I got the plug for it already and since we're not putting the factory heat shield on it's not going to affect anything 
So uh, anyway, I think this was close to the same price. Napa had it in stock, and uh, I haven't tried to put it on yet, but it looks like it's going to work. So my my uh, suggestion for you, if you're going to do this job yourself, is either go spend the extra money and go to the dealer and get it. It's actually worth it. Be worth it. Uh, this will probably be the last aftermarket converter I ever put on a customer's Honda. I'll probably just tell them either get, you know, we have to get the factory one or we're just not going to do the job. Unless this one works really, really well. Uh, I'm assuming this has a five-year warranty on it. I'm not 100% sure. I know the Magnaflow does, which is, I think they all have to have five-year warranties now, which is important because anything aftermarket, you can't, you know. I mean, this is a Honda one only lasts seven years. So people always say, well, the factory's better, but... I mean, really, this this car's only got 130 or 40 thousand miles on it, and uh, this cat's seven years old and it failed. So, how much better are these guys going to do? We, I, I really don't know. But uh, we'll definitely fill out the warranty card and send it in. So, I'm going to give this a shot. This is from Napa, and it looks like here's the part number on it. If you have a similar vehicle, uh, and like I said, this is Bank Two, the front cat. There's three cats on this car. So anyway, uh, now this one doesn't come with any of the gaskets or anything. This one actually did. Well, this one they said it was going to come with all the gaskets. All it came with was the top gasket to the to the actual uh, intake man. It didn't come with any of the air tube gaskets or the exhaust gasket. So and it also said it was uh, air tube was pre-installed and it wasn't pre-installed. There was no air tube with it. You just take your factory air tube off and transfer it. So anyway, my opinion of these Magnaflow is not very good at all. So we'll, anyway, we're going to step this video back up. I'm going to slide this in there, put the air tube on, make sure it lines up. And then uh, we'll pick it back up and, and hopefully have a better day today. I literally spent probably three hours yesterday and four trips to the uh, auto parts store trying to make this one work. And in the end, the air tube just was not going to line up. So it's just, you know, I basically probably lose the money. I'm going to make a minimum wage on this job by the time I'm done. If I count in all the time I wasted with this cat and going to the auto parts store and trying to get it to work, you know, you lose money, you, you're, you're going to lose money on it. Uh, I'd been much better off, me personally as a technician, to go and just get the factory one, but I couldn't talk her into it. She was, and I understand that, it's expensive, uh, and she's probably on a budget or whatever, I don't know, but I understand that when it's been extra two or three hundred dollars, but I think from now on I'm just going to be, uh, that's going to be, you know, Either we do the factory or we do, or I just don't, I pass on the job. So, because uh, the frustration level was super high. It's 110 degrees here in St. Louis. You're running back and forth to auto parts stores, dealing with this junk. This, you know, it's probably Chinese junk. It's uh, not worth it in the end, um, for, as far as mechanic goes. So, anyway, I'm going to uh, put the air tube on this. Make sure you put your gasket back in here. Tighten that down. Uh, here's the air tube. It's basically just two nuts goes up to the engine and uh, we're going to put it on, line it up, make sure it lines up and then we'll bolt this thing in and get this thing out of here. Alright, so you can see here, I don't have it bolted up yet, but I got it basically in where it's supposed to be. And you can see here that this air pipe goes right into uh, where it's supposed to go. Yesterday, I should have took a picture of it, but I was so frustrated uh, in this heat and running back and forth to the shops, to the auto parts store. With this up against the uh, manifold or the head like that, uh, this was like out to here on the other one the walker or the magna flow and there's no way you're going to bend that pipe all the way to there and uh, Have it you know This pipe you don't, you wouldn't want to bend it anyway because if you end up breaking it I'm sure it's 150 bucks a Honda to get it. So that's the difference right there uh, That pipe was about right there and There was no way to uh, manipulate. I wasn't going to bend this to try to make it work I didn't you know I don't want air leaks and I don't want to deal with all that so anyway this one's perfect uh, I got to give Napa props for this because uh, I called every single place around here and no one had it in stock and they're all trying to sell that Magnaflow junk and I'm not sure what brand this is if this is a Napa house brand or what it is but it's perfect fit you can see and uh, they had it, they actually had it in stock. You know, I, it's crazy that they have something in stock for a seven-year-old vehicle. Uh, it's too much to ask for nowadays with these auto parts stores. Got to order everything or go to the hub or whatever. So 
I know I'm ranting a little bit, but I'm just uh, really tired of these auto parts stores. They make our lives so much harder than what they should be, and they could do such a better job than they do. And, uh, you know, they're all like basically the McDonald's of auto parts. Uh, AutoZone, O'Reilly's, all of them. They're just advanced auto. I don't even know why they're in business. I, I've never, I've probably been there one time in the last three years where I actually had something in stock that I needed. Uh, Advanced Auto, I think, is the worst out of all of them. I don't, I don't know. But uh, enough of the rant. We'll get this thing back together and, uh, you know, get it back together and get it back on the road. All right, on something like this converter where you got like four, three points of contact, you got the contact down there with the exhaust, you got the contact up here with the manifold, and then you have the air tube over here that goes to the EGR and the engine. What you want to do on something like that, since you've got so many contact points, is just start all the bolts. Don't tighten them, but get them started and, and you know, uh, about halfway in on all three contact points before you tighten one contact point. Because if you tighten just one, I guarantee you the other two aren't going to line up. It's best to uh, start them all and then, uh, you know, I got the bottom started with the exhaust. I got this started and I got those started for the air tube. So now it will be safe to go ahead and, uh, you know, run down the top here, run down the bottom, and then run down your air tube. It's just uh, going to make your life easier um, to just start everything and uh, go from there on it than trying to just put this on and then, you know, you know what I'm saying. So, anyway, start all your stuff and then go ahead and torque these down. All right, so make sure your gasket's lined up and uh, go ahead and torque those down. I do a crisscross pattern on that. I put the O2 sensor in because I hate having open holes, uh, especially exhaust. You never know, something might fall down in there. You may think, well, that'll never happen, but uh, I actually was doing a head gasket on a uh, LSGM Chevy engine and had the head off. And the exhaust pipe was open, uh, obviously, because the manifold and everything was off of it. And I dropped this, somehow a socket fell off the fender well and fell into there. And it was a total nightmare to get that out. Uh, it rolled pretty far down into the exhaust. And uh, anyway, so I'm real, uh, aware of open holes, especially in exhaust and stuff like that. So I went ahead and uh, hand tighten that in for now, and then I'm gonna go ahead and torque it on, and then uh, go ahead and tighten, if you get this tight, go ahead and tighten your uh, air pump hose, and then we'll go down and tighten the, the bottom uh, bolts. So I, right now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this O2 sensor so I don't forget, and then I'm gonna tighten the air tube, and then we'll move on from the job. And, uh, it should fly pretty much from here on. All right, so here we are under the car. As, you, as I said before, I got these started down here, so I'm going to go ahead and tighten these up. And here's uh, what I was talking about earlier, that bung hole for the extra O2 sensor on the uh, aftermarket cattle converter. You can see here, uh, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't really be able to uh, put an O2 sensor in there anyway because it would go up against the engine. So how to move it down here on this pilot? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head which cars would have that O2 sensor, but I mean, as you, you know, you can imagine that cattle converter probably fits Odyssey and Ridgeline or anything with 3.5 in it. So, in probably several years, so this is that's kind of the compromise you get when you get an aftermarket part, is you might have issues like that pop up. So, you can get those plugs, that's an O2 sensor port plug, is what they call it. Uh, Walker makes it, I'm sure other people make it. It's 18 by one and a half is the thread uh, and the size. And uh, anyway, so yeah, you can just plug it up with that and be fine with it. Uh, and so that's, I just kind of want to point that out. You know, you can see here how to move it down here. It's the same basic as Aftercat O2 sensor. Uh, and this is actually the O2 sensor is telling the computer that this, this CAD is uh, low efficiency. So uh, this would be the one you would suspect if you thought you had a bad O2 sensor. Uh, forgetting that 420 would be this sensor here but I ran the scan tool on it and watched it with the other bank and this thing was right with it uh, they were both similar numbers so I was pretty confident it was the CAD on this one uh, a lot of people think oh, if you get the 420 or 430 it's your O2 sensor and that's very rarely the case very rarely because usually if your O2 sensor is bad you'll get the O2 sensor code or uh, you know something similar so uh, I wouldn't suspect this right away but it's a good thing to check it when you if you do get that 420 or 430 because uh, 
if this is skewed or something's wrong with it or it's not sending back the right data, uh, you could it could maybe set the 420 or 430 even though it's unlikely. It's a possibility. So it's something that you want to rule out. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and run these down and then uh, we'll go back up to the top. Okay, one thing I forgot one thing I forgot to mention while I was down here, don't forget to put this bolt in right here. It goes to the, uh, your block. It's just an extra uh, support for your converter. Uh, you know, one 15 millimeter bolt right there. And then you'll be done under here. Uh, I did forget to mention that. And then if you drained your radiator, make sure you tighten your uh, petcock up down here. And I just said that because I like to say petcock. All right, so I went ahead and put the coils back in. Uh, you may not have to take these out on this. Uh, the service manual says take them out so you don't damage them. I went ahead and did it. It only takes a minute to take them out. Uh, but it looks like you had no clearance. But anyway, I went ahead and took them out anyway. So I put those back in, two 10 millimeters, plug them in. And then I uh, tightened the O2 sensor down and plugged it into the connector over here. So uh, I think the next step is going to be putting the fans back in. And uh, so I'll go ahead and start on that. And then... Uh, We'll move on. We should be, we're pretty close to getting this buttoned up, though. All right, so once you slide the fans back down and uh, get the bolts started back up, or in, go ahead and hook in the 6,000 connectors that go to it. There's actually only like four connectors, but there's a ton of these little clips where the wiring harness clips into. Go ahead and uh, button all that up. And then after that, we'll uh, put the upper radiator hose on and then uh, start putting all the supports back together. All right, so I got all the fans tight. I uh, went ahead and put the uh, hood release back on. Don't forget, you got an electrical connector that goes underneath it. Uh, you would have had to take that apart to get this off anyway. So that's back together. So I'm going to slip this uh, front radiator hose in, and then we'll start putting the uh, brackets back on that holds it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put the bra this brace in. Uh, you got that bottom nut, and then it comes up to here. You got this bolt, and then you got the two for this uh, oil cooler. And then you're going to put your uh, radiator back in and basically your grill. Now, a lot of people say you got to pull the whole bumper. If you got a, uh, a uh, mirror and you're a little bit, uh, you know, somewhat skilled with your hands, you can get behind here and just pull these clips up upside down without ruining them. And you want to pull the whole bumper off. I recommend doing that. So uh, that's basically it to this. I'm going to clear the codes, take it for a test drive. I've already started. There's no exhaust leaks. Make sure you have no exhaust leaks, obviously. But uh, all i got really left at this point is to tighten this down, put the grill back in, put the engine cover back on, and clear the codes and that radiator cover. Really no point in going over that. If you took it off, you know how to put it back together. It's all easy stuff. Uh, that's pretty much it on this. Uh, it's a not too bad of a job. If you get the right catalytic converter and uh, you're somewhat skilled at all you should be able to do it in two three hours uh, it's not a real big job you can't really see it when everything's together but once you start taking things apart uh, it opens up and it's pretty easy the one thing I would say is definitely put some cardboard by your radiator when you pull that out just so you don't damage your radiator um, and that's about it uh, good luck if you get an aftermarket converter this one is from Napa and what's that part number on that? Put it on the box. One, six, Just give me the box. One, six, six, five, eight. So anyway, it's a, she won't give me the box. So it's a Napa converter, 16658. And that's the Bank 2 catalytic converter for a Honda Pilot. I don't know, it might be different for yours, but if you got 2012, I if you're going to go aftermarket, go to Napa. That's the only one that I found that worked. Everyone else uh, either had to order it or it just didn't seem right so anyway this was a perfect bolt up uh, it went real smooth once i got the right one and uh anyway that's i guess that's it for the 2012 honda pilot i got some more hondas coming in later this week so uh we'll see you on the next one we'll get this uh button the rest of the way back up and get this hoopty back on the road thanks for watching